Hello! Today we're diving deep into the components of a bow tie diagram. There are seven essential elements that make up this powerful risk management tool. We'll explore each one in detail, so stay tuned. By the way, if you're looking for similar videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe for more. So let's get started with number one, hazard. Our journey begins with the hazard. This is the starting point of the bow tie diagram and represents a potential source of harm. It could be an operation, an activity, or a material. Think of it as something that needs to be contained or carefully handled to prevent a loss of control. For example, in the context of road safety, the hazard could be as straightforward as operating a motor vehicle. It's the foundation of the entire diagram. Next up, number two, top event. This is the pivotal point in the bow tie diagram. In fact, this is the knot in the bow tie shape. It represents the moment where control over the hazard is lost, but adverse consequences haven't yet occurred. Everything in the diagram revolves around preventing this top event from happening or mitigating its effects. In our road safety example, the top event might be loss of control of the vehicle. Here's a tip, ensure your top event does not depict a consequence. At the moment of the top event, there is still time to recover. This is why the top event for our road safety example would not be car crash. So now we ask ourselves, if that's the top event, what are the consequences of that? Which brings us nicely on to number three, consequences. Consequences represent the undesirable outcomes that could result from the top event. These can range from environmental damage to injuries, damaged reputation, or even loss of life. Identifying and understanding potential consequences is crucial for effective risk management. In road safety, one of the consequences could be a collision with an object or another vehicle. In a bow tie, these are placed on the right-hand side. But what's on the left? Glad you asked. Number four, threats. Threats are sources of harm that could lead to the top event. Threats can be the result of a failure, external influences, or operational issues. They include system malfunctions or external factors that increase the likelihood of the top event occurring. For our road safety example, threats could include obstruction on road and foggy weather. You get the idea. There's often more than one or two threats and consequences, so it's important to really brainstorm the possible scenarios. But for now, let's move on to barriers. You may often hear them simply referred to as barriers, but different types of barriers play different roles in the bow tie diagram. So let's move on to number five, preventative barriers. Preventative barriers sit between the threats and top event on the left-hand side, and are the measures put in place to prevent the top event from occurring. These can include safety features, protocols, and training programs designed to maintain control over the hazard. If preventative barriers work as intended, mitigative barriers may not even be needed, and all consequences can be avoided. In road safety, a preventative barrier could be something like brakes or defensive driving techniques. So, what about the other barrier type? Let's move on to number six, mitigative barriers. So, mitigative barriers sit between the top event and consequences on the right-hand side and come into play after the top event has occurred. They are controls and strategies aimed at reducing the impact of the consequences. They play a crucial role in minimizing harm and facilitating an effective response to the incident. In the context of road safety, an example of a mitigative barrier would be the airbag system or a seatbelt, which could both prevent or mitigate injuries or loss of life in the event of a crash. It's important to note that some barriers can serve both preventative and mitigative roles. For example, defensive driving techniques can both prevent a driver from losing control of the vehicle and mitigate the consequences if they do lose control. So, now you know. But there's one more component of the bow tie diagram that we haven't yet covered. Do you know what it is? Number seven, degradation factor. And so finally, we have degradation factors, also known as escalation factors. These are conditions or situations that can compromise the effectiveness of barriers. They should be used sparingly and represent only the most significant threats to barrier integrity. In our road safety scenario, a degradation factor might be not wearing a seatbelt, which could lead to the failure of the wearing a seatbelt barrier. Each degradation factor should be equipped with its own barrier known as a degradation control. 
In our example, a degradation control to not wearing a seatbelt could be a seatbelt alarm, which reduces the chances of the barrier failing. Having mentioned all these components of a bowtie diagram, we've overlooked one element that's pretty important when conveying the risk, and that's the actual design of a bowtie diagram. You can create these elements using various tools like Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. We actually created free templates for you to use. The link's in the description. The example that we have shown on screen today was built using Bowtie Master. If you'd like to see a demo or have any questions, feel free to contact us. And there you have it, the seven essential elements of a bowtie diagram. We hope you have found this helpful. If you want to learn more about risk management, bowtie diagrams, or other informative topics, make sure to check out our channel. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, goodbye.